We're continuing with King's Gambit. This time, second move, Knight F6. And it's called Petrov Defense. It's not Petrov, uh, but it's still second move and second move, Knight F6. And uh, one interesting note here. Uh, looks like these Knight F6 moves, uh, such as Petrov Defense against the main line, uh, second move by White, Knight F3. And this one against the King's Gambit, which is called Petrov. Those are very solid for black. So this could be an interesting opening choice for all of you guys who might be interested uh, for this opening with black pieces against the King's Gambit to easily solve the opening problems. So it's not easy at all uh, for getting an advantage with white pieces. I'm going to show you a couple of interesting lines and hopefully you'll enjoy but don't expect anything that spectacular uh, after knight f6 in my opinion you should take an e5 there is a possibility to go into one of the main lines with knight f3 and when they capture e5 knight h5 d4 d6 and here to go like nepo in his uh, course where he said play either queen e2 uh, what he did against firuzia or knight c3 what he did against sanal those are two good interesting openings he used them in blitz exclusively so uh, according to the engines black should be fine here but i realized that nepo won both of these games although he was a better player in both of these games another option is knight c3 but after d5 f takes knight e4 uh, this is nothing else but vienna gambit and if you wanted to play vienna gambit why would you play second move f4 and king's gambit so that's why my vote goes to f takes e5 they gotta capture an e4 and all of a sudden they threaten queen h4 check to immediately win the game so king is kind of jeopardized of course you play knight f3 you develop your piece you prevent queen h4 you overprotect your pawn on e5 and everything seems to be cool although the problem comes now uh, if they play anything but knight g5 which is the main idea of this system uh, for example if they play bishop e7 just a logical developing move you play d4 and you have a nice game I'd like to develop my bishop to d3. I'd like to play castle. F file is open. Initiative is going to be on my side. Uh, they don't have time for bishop h4. You play g3 and bishop g2, and you have a much better development advantage. Well, at the same time, if they go for d5, you capture, play bishop d3. And obviously, here you can choose a variety of possibilities like knight c3 bishop f4 knight d5 queen e1 queen g3 uh, doing the king side action and the attack so all of these positions are quite fine but problem is knight g5 which is the main move so here i'm gonna give you two approaches uh the main one is d4 and that's the most logical one where you threaten to win the piece on the spot and another line could be c3 c3 is interesting and I'll show you, you're probably wondering, what the hell, why not d4 to carry on developing pieces? After c3, uh, they gotta go knight f3, queen f3. They immediately going to break in the center, you play d4. They take, you play bishop c4, threatening scholar's mate on f7. And when they play queen f6, you play queen a4. You threaten rook f1, they gotta play queen f5, and you have to play queen e2. You once again threaten rook f1 and quite interesting moment is that they have to go with f6 it's not typically a human move and doesn't look uh aesthetically good for 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 black you have to admit so believe it or not this is the only move for them and that's why i believe from practical point of view this position should be a tiny bit better for white <coughs> Uh, we can have like pretty good expectations that most of your opponents won't play f6. If they play bishop e6, play d5, play rook f1, and the initiative is on your side. If they play anything else, you will do pretty much the same. Rook f1 is an obvious threat. So they gotta go f6, you capture, exchange everything. And once again, I gotta get back to the practical point of, of, of view. Once again, I believe you have a small... Uh, 
advantage here, although you just have to keep in mind that you're down a pawn. They have this isolated pawn. Everything because of a little bit better development. But let's be honest, this is equal. You can't get much more than this. So that's why after an g 5 most logical thing is d4. They got to take on f3. That's, that's anyways the point of Petrov defense. If they play bishop e7, you develop your knight, you develop your bishop, you capture by queen, and ideas such as queen e4, if g6, bishop h6, afterwards short castle with some sacrifices on f7, those are like a highlight motives of this variation. So, for example, I'll show you what happened in uh, one game. The guy played d6, white went for queen e4, a famous battery between the queen and the bishop, uh, g6 to stop mate, bishop h6 to threaten bishop, and played castles. I don't know if you fill it, but rook f7 is an obvious threat with checkmate after bishop c4. That's a very nice one, and the guy made a terrible blunder, played uh, knight e6, and after rook f7, uh, he resigned the game. But what I'm actually trying to tell you here is that after you play d4, they gotta take on f3. And when you take by queen, they give you check. And all of a sudden, your d4 pawn is hanging. So you can't give it up. I tried to find some ways of sacking the pawn on d4 and playing for initiative, but it doesn't work. So you can play. Uh, you, you should play after, after queen h4, queen g3. Queen f2 leads to equal position maybe a little bit better because of some development advantage for you they will for sure break your center you should take play bishop d3 knight d2 dragging your knight to c4 e4 or most likely f3 but this is nothing and after queen g3 this is something because they have to take on g3 if they take on d4 quite an interesting line you play knight c3 where you threaten knight b5 harassing the queen on b5, uh, sorry, on d4, and threatening pawn on c7. If they go knight c6, knight b5, queen e4, check. You place your king, believe it or not, right into the center, and you're much better. You threaten knight c7, fork. You want to play bishop d3. If they go with a simple, pretty much the same approach, you just give check, developing your pieces, opening up the back rank, playing bishop d3, following... Uh, followed by rook f1, g7 is hanging. Lots of problems for black players here. And that's why I think they have to take on g3. You should recapture. And yes, we do have a double pawns, but those are good double pawns because what do we have? We have a, a little bit better development advantage. And all together with that, we have an open h file. That's quite nice and quite enough in modern chess. Uh, if they go d6, you should go with knight c3, threatening knight d5 or knight b5. If they go d5, you play bishop e3. Uh, you want to play knight c3 with tempo, long castle, bishop d3. Uh, you just want to somehow uh, take advantage of the open um, f and h files. But once again, I got to be fully objective with you quite a good and quite a solid interesting approach from black's point of view petrov defense second move knight f6 by black and this could be a good alternative for you if you ever had problems uh what to do against petrov defense and you're just club player you're just bored of learning lots of difficult uh variations so much theory so just go for this Let's be honest, in the final position, what is a tiny bit better, but black is absolutely, absolutely fine as well. Thanks. See you next time.